Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are continuing our video series on trigonometry and Pythagoras' theorem and bearings by looking at our 10th video in the series, a complex question that combines a range of different knowledges. Okay, and this video is aimed at students probably from grades 10 and above. Okay, so let's look at Ellie. She walks for 30 minutes at five kilometers per hour on a bearing of 130 degrees true, and then jogs at 12 kilometers per hour for 20 minutes on a bearing of 220 degrees true. How far is Ellie from her starting position to the nearest meter? Now, straight away, when I showed this question to my year 11s, they freaked out a little bit. They were like, oh, there's so much going on here. Let's unpack that using Polya's problem solving process, see, plan, do, check. So let's start with C. What do we see here? What's our key information? So grab your highlighter pens, you're gonna highlight the important stuff. It's not important that Ellie's walking or jogging, or even that her name is Ellie, although that's my sister's name and she's fabulous. But what's important is the information about the numbers so that we can use that to solve our problem. Let's have a quick look at that. There's some a knowledge that we might need to use here. So we need to know about true bearings. We need to know about distance, speed, and time. And we need to possibly know some other things, maybe some trigonometry, maybe some Pythagoras' theorem. We'll find out as we start to solve the problem. The best place to go now is to draw a picture and rough sketch of what we're doing. We don't need to draw this to scale, although if we can draw it as close as possible to what's happening, it does make our drawing a lot easier to use. So let's start by drawing our compass north, south, east, and west. And we're gonna do the first leg of Ellie's voyage, which is her walk, which is in this direction because it's a bearing of 130 degrees true. So we know it's in that quadrant. Now we've passed through 90 degrees up the top, 130 degrees less that right angle between north and east gives us 40 degrees. And um, that's her bearing out there. So remember bearings from north clockwise. Now that means that in that quadrant down there between east and south, we have 50 degrees left over to make up a right angle in there. So we've got 40 and 50. That's the first part of Ellie's voyage, her walk. Now we need to draw in her jog. Now, a good way to do this is to draw a new compass. So I'm gonna make that compass there itty bitty so it doesn't get messy and confusing. And I'm gonna put a new big compass here um, for the next part of her voyage. So she's gonna be starting again where she finished the last part of her voyage. And this time it's a bearing of 220 degrees true. So we're gonna pass through north and south. That gives us 180 degrees and 40 degrees onwards from there gives us to her bearing. So maybe you want to process that a little bit, have a think about how we got the 40 degrees there. And that means that because there's a right angle between south and west, then that angle on the other side of that bearing line is going to be 50 degrees. Now, what we're trying to do here now is find this third leg from where she finishes her jog to getting home. And we could draw a line in here at the moment and we'll make a triangle because then triangles enable us to solve using trigonometry or Pythagoras' theorem. Um, so, but you might be thinking to yourself, well, I need to get some numbers in here so that I can work out um, where I'm going with this. Or maybe I need an angle down here. Maybe I should draw in this last part and then work out some angles. Well, I'm gonna make it kind of simple for you. If you remember that your east-west lines are both parallel lines from your compasses there, then we can use our knowledge of alternate angles and parallel lines because alternate angles or Z angles are equal. So we're actually gonna use this angle here. From here, it's a backward Z and that's gonna give us this missing information in here. Alternate angles are equal, so that will be 40 degrees inside what we're gonna be doing to draw ourselves a triangle with that third leg home. Now, with, that means we've got 40 plus 50, that makes a right angle. So we can replace that with a right angle there. Now, it's very tempting to draw the line back from where she finishes to home and to assume that that's 50 degrees, which would make that in there the balance of that. However, you need to remember we haven't drawn this to scale. So this line here at the moment looks like it's roughly the same length as the other line. That might not necessarily be true because we don't know anything about the distances. So we didn't draw that to scale. In fact, we didn't even draw these angles in to scale using a protractor either. So we can't just make assumptions that this line here runs exactly north-south. We don't know that it does at all. In fact, 
if we if this line was in fact longer we could end up with um, a much bigger angle up here than 50 degrees that could actually be out in that quadrant there or it could even be if this line here was much shorter then that line here could be falling in here and that means that angle there will be a lot less than 50 degrees so don't make assumptions just based on the scale that you've drawn what we need to do is now pull this triangle out with the information we've got the only information we've got from the bearings is that that's a right angle triangle so i'm going to actually draw that separately now with the walk here and the jog here we need to get some information from the question now about how far the walk was and how far the jog was okay so all that bearing information helped us do was establish that this was a right angled triangle and that's all it was useful for okay the next part is looking at the information from her speed and her time and you might remember this diagram from grade seven and eight um, distance equals speed times time you may not know how to use the triangle I have a way that I remember I put it in alphabetical order anti-clockwise so which is kind of annoying when you're thinking about bearings and it's all clockwise but D goes at the top of the triangle and then um, underneath is ST in alphabetical order we read from left to right and that's why I do it in that order now to find out a distance you cover the distance over if it's under the line you're multiplying but if it's one above the line and one below the line that's like a divider so that would be division if you're trying to find times um, the time that someone took it'd be d divided by s and if you try to find the um, speed it'd be d divided by t because this line acts like a dividing line but in this case we're trying to find distance so we cover distance over we've got s times t so what we're going to do is take this information from up here and we're going to use the formula distance equals speed times time now at the moment we need to put our times into the same units of measurement as our speed our speeds in kilometers and per hour this is in minutes so we need to change that into hours so 30 minutes is half of an hour so we're going to have half an hour times five kilometers per hour which will give us 2.5 kilometers is our distance for the walk now we need to find the distance for the jog we're going to use the same formula distance equals speed times time again this time we've got 20 minutes which is a third of an hour so it's going to be 0.33 into infinity times 12 which gives us a third of 12 is four kilometers so that's the length of her jog now notice we've got no angles inside the triangle so we can't actually use trigonometry to help us but we can use Pythagoras's theorem so you can see these kinds of complex questions draw on all sorts of information from everywhere to be able to solve and that's why they could be a complex unfamiliar question in an exam so now we need to calculate this distance to the starting position so we're going to use Pythagoras's theorem c squared equals a squared plus b squared back from video one and two and we're going to substitute into the equation simplify it a little bit and we're going to find that c is equal to the square root of 22.25 which gives us about 4.7 kilometers now we need to read the question and find out how to round it it actually wants it rounded to the nearest meter now my first instinct was to round to the nearest kilometer but we need to do a conversion so once again this is an extra step that increases the complexity of the question so we need to multiply that by a thousand to get 4717 kilometer meters is her approximate position from the start now that's our do step what about our check step well we should write a statement for starters but we should also think about the logic of what we've just done is it logical that her hypotenuse is longer than the other two sides yes it is is this a logical distance from home if you'd written kilometers well that means she's um, probably almost the radius of the earth almost um, from home not logical so make sure your units are a logical unit okay so that's part of our check as well and you may want to go back and just have a quick check of your drawing um, to make sure you didn't make any unnecessary assumptions when you came up with your original drawing okay well that's all we have time for i hope this video was helpful to you in showing how we can use different concepts from different parts of our education to bring together a complex unfamiliar question on bearings we'll have more later on in the series so if you found this helpful why not tell someone you could like and subscribe or tell us in the comments and hit that notifications button so you always know when a new video is available and if you've got questions about what you saw today contact us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com.au but if you can't remember the email address we're on social media so jump on facebook and instagram you'll see tips tricks memes competitions jokes and fun things there as well so you can always direct message us that way well i'm natalie mcclutchy you've been watching mcclutchy mass have a wonderful day